She she's not gonna let me put my coffee down. She just <laughs> There we go. There's my coffee. Good morning everyone. My name is Callie and I'd like to welcome you back to another week of Clarinet's Cats and Coffee. So today's video is going to be on sound quality and intonation in the throat tone range. And I've had a lot of questions asking for um, some more specifics on troubleshooting throat tone. So we're going to go over that now. And then, then for the rest of the month, we will venture out of throat tone land. Um, but for now, we're going to spend um, just one more session doing throat tone stuff. Now, one of the major things that... Uh, people have have asked me is how do you make your throat tones not sound airy and the only thing I can say is to make sure you're actually engaging your core while you're playing and I think I said this last week use your core to get more core in the sound and you're just kind of engaging you know your abdominal muscles a little bit to keep the sound from sounding so like or airy now, if you try engaging your core and that's not helping, the other thing you need to do is make sure that your teeth are aligned and your jaw is in position when you play and it stays in position while you play. All you need to do is use your index finger and take your teeth, put them straight up and down, use your index finger as a guide to make sure they're straight up and down, and then keeping your teeth straight up and down, open your jaw uh, this way, and that's all you need to do. So for a lot of us who have overbites, when we go to play, if our jaw is too far back, our tongue is going to be really far back and we have to do all kinds of weird biting and stuff and it's just like a mess. So I, I, would, I would like to encourage you guys to try this, try this technique. You may have to position where, you know, how you hold the mouthpiece, reposition that, but I would say that is another big thing that will give you more core in the sound. So teeth straight up and down when you play and don't move your jaw, keep it stable. You'd be surprised, so many people move their jaw when they play. Now, if you're engaging your core and your teeth are straight up and down and you're still feeling like you're not getting the best sound, perhaps, perhaps they sound a little bit kind of pinched off or kind of eh instead of ooh. And that I would say is probably caused by improper embouchure and so when we form our embouchure we want to make sure that we form our embouchure around the bone structure of our face and which will also allow the reed to vibrate as freely as possible and so a lot of us when we form our embouchure though you know we're pretty good at keeping the chin flat our top lip down but then our corners for whatever reason we go backwards toward our ears our ears when we play so what happens when our corners go backwards our bottom lip gets really really stretched out and kind of thin and it ends up just pinching off the sound and there's not a lot of resonance or vibration so if you form your embouchure and imagine bringing your corners forward line up your teeth eh, bring your corners forward ooh, more like a drawstring coming in then you'll get so much more core and resonance in your sound. So it really takes a lot of focus practice to just make sure that you're keeping all of these elements in place. So I'm going to give you a little long tone warm up, kind of in the throat tone range. It goes over the break a couple times, but. It's, it's very simple. You start on a low C and you just go up chromatically one note at a time, increasing the interval until you're doing an entire octave. And what you want to do is just make sure you're playing as smooth and legato as possible, connecting all of the notes and keeping all of these elements, your core, your jaw, your embouchure, moving together and, and well, you want to keep your jaw stationary, right? But you want to keep all of these things working together so that your sound is beautiful. So I'm going to play that for you really quick.
resonance fingerings, if you go back and listen to what I was doing, doing just a moment ago, um, resonance fingerings are the, are the little coverings that you do when you're playing throat tones like G, G sharp, A, and B flat. And every clarinet, every note has the ideal resonance fingerings. However, it's, to me, resonance fingerings are, are really just dependent on what you're playing, what part of the chord you're playing, um, what you're playing in relation, like melodically, if, if, you know, some notes sound better a little higher or a little lower. So resonance fingerings are something that I personally don't think are an exact precise science. So it's good to know what sounds the best on your particular instrument, on particular notes, and it's good to know how all of these notes react to having more or less combinations of fingerings just to know how much to lower the pitch or you know if you know that <clears throat> you know one note sounds a little better with these down and another sounds a little better with these down or you blend better with one instrument like this and another instrument like this it's good to know those things and how it changes the sound so I do encourage all of you to try to figure out how the resonance fingerings work and on your instrument with your setup and watch how the the tuner changes over time now the major intonation issue with throat tones most of the time is that people are sharp right it's a this is a naturally sharp range on the clarinet so when you add resonance fingerings it will lower the pitch the thing that you want to avoid is changing your embouchure or jaw position to compensate for intonation problems. For example, if you're if you're in band and a conductor is yelling at you because you're sharp, drop your jaw! That's a really quick fix to lower the pitch of whatever it is you're playing. <laughs> I personally don't think that dropping the jaw is a great solution to anything. When you drop the jaw, you lower the tongue, you slow down the air. It not only brings the pitch down, it also has a negative impact on the tone quality. So my solution is keep your jaw and everything in position and if your embouchure, if your jaw is too tight around the mouthpiece, you're gonna need to loosen up your jaw grip just in general on everything that you play, right? So keep your jaw in its natural position and let your air kind of adjust the intonation and the pitch. I mean, you can do a lot more with your air than with your jaw and keep the, the sound quite pretty. How does this apply to throat tones? Throat tones are going to sound really disgusting if you don't play them with fast air and high tongue position. But when you play these notes with fast air and high tongue position, they will most likely be sharp. So you have to compensate through figuring out the resonance fingerings which will bring the pitch down. Now if you have a good instrument, you should more or less be, it should be pretty close to in tune, but you know, maybe throat tones will be around 10 to 15 cents sharp, and that's, that's pretty easy to fix with resonance fingerings. However, I'm not a huge fan of, of dropping the jaw, especially on throat tones, because they sound gross. Likewise, like I said before, if your sound is kind of pinched, it means you've got too hard of a grip on the mouthpiece with your jaw, so you'd want to relax the jaw overall on everything you play. Now, I really love doing that little warm-up because I think that low C is, is a pretty stable note, and if you can sound really good on low C, the idea is to have a consistent airflow between low C and every interval as you go up the chromatic scale. And if you can keep that consistency, your sound will be so much better and you'll also 
not have to work as hard for changing every single thing about your sound for every single note. So the main takeaway here is aim for consistency of air, consistency of jaw position, consistency of tongue position, consistency of embouchure. If you keep everything the same, your life will be so much easier. Lastly, in the rare instance that you are flat on your throat tones, I would double check and make sure that one, your reed isn't too soft. If your reed is super soft, you're gonna be flat pretty much on everything, but your throat tones are gonna be really honky sounding and, and you'll end up overblowing everything. And I would also just double check to make sure you're not overblowing or dropping your tongue position or dropping your jaw. So if you're doing any of those things in combination, the chances that your throat tones will be kind of honky or flat in sound or flat in pitch are, are much higher. So again, if you keep everything consistent, your intonation will be much more stable and you'll be able to change your intonation with fingerings instead of with your jaw or embouchure. So I hope you guys find that helpful. It's a great little warm up. Thank you all so much for watching and as always, happy practicing.